Dear we would like to read for the curriculum today. Honorable Alaji Alpakanu, Sierra Leone Minister of Information and Communication, assume office in January 2001, 21, 2013. Sierra Leone, Minister of Presidential and Public Affairs, in office December 3, 2010 until January 21, 2013. Spokesman of all peoples from West, assume office 2007. Sierra Leone Minister of Natural Resources in office of February 27, 2009 until December 3, 2010. Sierra Leone Minister of Presidential and Public Affairs in office of October 14, 2007 until February 29, 2009. Member of Parliament of Sierra Leone from both Lobo District in office 2002 until 2007. For your personal details, Board, Al-Aji Alpha Sahib Barakanu, Port Local District, Sierra Leone, Nationality, Sierra Leone, Political Party, All People's Congress, Residents, Freetown, Sierra Leone, Amamanta, Bora Bay College, University of Nottingham, Profession, Mini, Engineer, Religion, Islam. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Yes. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. My name is the MC for this afternoon session and the interpreter for this afternoon who has just read biography of myself that I have long since forgotten about. <laughs> Thank you very much. The rector, Professor Dr. Eddie Siraj of the University Universitas Pembangkuna National. In Jakarta, the vice rectors of the university, the commissioner for child protection here in Indonesia, and our own representative of the government of Sierra Leone in Indonesia, Haji Datu Agung Sidayu. Members of faculty, students, and employees, staff of the UPN here in Jakarta, and of course the very melodious choir of beautiful young women, resplendently turned out to render such beautiful rendition of the national anthem and the song that we just heard. Very inspirational, very warm, very welcome. Thank you very much for that. I am happy to be given the honor of not only visiting this university during a short stay here in Indonesia, but also being given the opportunity to once again stand in front of the university faculty of students after I had left the University of Sierra Leone as a lecturer back in 1987. I am happy to once again stand in front of people with the potential to turn Indonesia into one of the best countries in the world. I say this because this is my first trip to Asia at all, and I'm glad that I came to Indonesia because I do not feel as if I have been deracinated, I, I have not lost my roots. Because when I came into Indonesia, I noticed that the people were just as friendly, if not more friendly than where I come from. In Sierra Leone, 
the food is almost exactly the same. The fruit and wild fruit about the same. This is because we all occupy the same latitudes, geographical latitudes, on the opposite side of the equator. So if I look at the equator as a mirror, I'll see that Indonesia is like a mirror image of Sierra Leone, only that it is a much bigger image in terms of population. So I thank you for giving me the opportunity. And I'm happy I came to Indonesia first. So my first experience of Asia is one of feeling of wanting to come back. I will return to Asia and most likely it will be Indonesia. I am here accompanying His Excellency the President of Serbia, Dr. Ernest Baikuruma, um, as a guest of the Conference of Af Asia Africa uh, for celebrating the South South Cooperation that was started many, many years ago, I think 1955 in Bantu, which is about 60 years this year. And uh, this formed the basis for the non-aligned movement, which sprang from Bantu. So all of the non-aligned movement and South-South cooperation started right here in Indonesia. So you have made yourself a place in history. And that history, us coming from Africa, us coming from across the equator on the other side, We'll never forget. Thank you for helping us discover that yes, self-rule can be attained and we did attain that. This afternoon, I am going to speak on a topic that has relevance to us all as people, as mankind. As we see there are so many conflicts in the world today. Some of them started for no reason than only because we find ourselves we were following different religions. But Sierra Leone, where I come from, has been designated as a country with the best religious tolerance in the whole world. It's number one. And I believe we must share our experience. And we must share these experiences. We must tell you how we got there. I am also gratified and encouraged to learn, to know that Indonesia is the largest Muslim country in the world. But apart from that, you also have other religions, notably Christianity here, and they live side by side as we do in Sierra Leone. So, it is a place to start for this talk. My lecture, or my discussion for this afternoon, I will call it simply Love thy neighbor as thyself. It's love the next man as you love yourself. And why do I say this? Because all of the conflicts that we have heard about in the world started for simple reasons. What are these simple reasons? Envy, covetousness, and not being satisfied with one's station in life. The very first crime and the very first source of conflict started with Adam and Eve. They had two sons. One was Cain, the elder, and Abel was the second. But out of envy, Cain killed Abel. Out of covetousness, Cain killed Abel. And that's when all the problems in the world started. God became angry, and of course, punished Cain. But since then, even internecine conflicts, international conflicts, intertribal conflicts have time. But we as a people have a responsibility to find solutions. 
because everything that has a problem must have a solution. And how do we go about this? We are not wise enough as a people to lead ourselves, to advise ourselves. But we have books. We have books that have been given to us through the divine intervention of Almighty Allah. We have the Bible which has teachings about relationships and how we can maintain the peace. And we have the Quran which also has certain sections in there that tells us about neighborliness and good living one another. Respect for each other's rights. When Nabila Musa, peace be upon him, stood on the burning bush, according to Bible, God gave him a tablet. On that tablet, there were ten rules of engagement for people to live there. We call it the Ten Commandments. And if we had followed all of these Ten Commandments, I am sure most of the conflicts in the world would not have happened the way they did. The most important thing says, Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not correct thy neighbor's property. Thou shalt not take away thy neighbor's wife. Thou shalt love and honor thy mother as thyself. These are just examples. I'm sure the rest you can find. But these are all high moral value uh, pieces of that. If we're stuck to that, we would not have problems among ourselves. So what happened? We did not pay much attention. Conflicts happened the world over. And then, in 2000 years ago, maybe 2015, the Masihun Isa Ibn Mariam, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, into the world. And one of the biggest lessons that he left for us is that should love thy neighbor as thyself. We are very stubborn as human beings. Sometimes we forget, but we need from time to time to be reminded of this. But if we love thy neighbor as thyself, I will not covet my neighbor's fault. If I love my neighbor as I love myself, I will not take what he has. If I love my neighbor as I love myself, I will not kill him or her. So this for me is the encompassing lesson that was given to us by God. But today, the biggest threat, biggest threat to life as it is, is that of religious intolerance. This happens most times because we have people among us, both parts of the divide, the religious divide, the Christians, the Muslims, who tell people otherwise. This is because most of us don't find the time to read. Most of us don't find the time to listen. We are too busy working to please ourselves, to satisfy our worldly needs that we forget the spiritual. But if you do, you don't need anybody guide you because the books are there to guide you. And what do the books say about religious tolerance? For this I will refer you to Surah to Bakr. Verse 285. And there Allah said, Amna Rasulu Bima Munzila Ilaihi Bidrabi. He said, the apostle, us, we should believe and be obey all of the prophets that came from Allah. All of them. We should 
not discriminate against any one of them as long as they come from Allah. And here I refer to the leading prophets. The leading prophet of Christianity is Ibn Mayyam. We call Jesus Christ. It's one of the prophets God is referring to. We must obey them. We must believe that they came from him. He also refers to our own prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa We must believe that he is the messenger of Allah. If you believe this, you will let the Christian be. You will let the Muslim be. Nobody will fight each other because at the end of the day, what is the objective? The objective is to serve the one God. And that leads me to the mission of uh, Ibrahim, Nabila Ibrahim, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We call him Abraham Ibrahim. He, we are told, had two sons. One was Ishaq. And the other, Ishmael. Ishmael was the heir. But because his wife got jealous after she had a baby, she asked that uh, Abraham got rid of the other family, i.e., the mother of Ishmael. No. Thereafter, Prophet Ibrahim took uh, Ishmael and his mother to the wilderness. And they ended up in the valley of Oran, where today we have the Kaaba in Mecca. But before he left, the place was barren. It was a desert. A complete desert. Rocks everywhere. There was not even water for them to drink. But he had to go back to Kenya, to his other family. So what did he do? Because he had faith in the one God, he left the welfare of his family to Allah. And what did he say? وَإِشْخَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ رَبِّي يَجَرْ هَذَا الْبَلَدَ بِيْنَا وَأَجْمِ بِيْهِ وَبَدِي نَعْمِلُ الْأَسْنَانِ رَبِّي نَعْمُنَا الْأَسْنَانِ رَبِّي نَعْمُنَا أَسْلَلَا كَسِيرًا لِلنَّاسِ فَبَيْتَ بِيَانِ فَإِنَا رُمِّنِ وَمَنَ السَّانِ أَيْنَكَ كَفُرُ الْوَحِيمُ رَبَّنَا إِلَكَ تَعْلَمُ مَا I am leaving my family in this God forsaken desert. They have no food, they have no water. Oh Allah, look after me. Make sure that even though this place is barren, let the people of the world in other places bring food to them. Let the people of the world bring water. Let them bring death. Let them bring man, bring everything. And today, that prayer still been answered by Allah. When you look at Saudi Arabia, you look at Mecca in particular. It is barren. It is desert, but believe me, it's one of the richest countries in the world today. That shows you the power of the world. Abraham prayed. He did not only pray for Ishmael. He prayed for Ishaq also. Which means that the two religions which can trace their ancestry to both Ishmael and Isha came from one source, Nabila Ibrahim. And if that is the case, then of course the Muslim must be a brother to the Christian. And if we are brothers, why should we fight? That leads me to President day Sierra Leone. Our president, President Alice Baikoma, is a Christian. And the current vice president we have is also a Christian. We have a 70% Muslim population in Sierra Leone, but we vote in Christian leaders because we believe that the religion is a matter of choice for us. But the objective is to get to one goal. The one goal is the worship of the one true God. And we do that. And our president, President Anis Bay Corona, who is here with me, but he's busy with the country, it's going to come. I wish he would have been here, I would be here He's a man who actually, when we have our Muslim festivals of Eid, 
And my look at Nabi, he would accompany us to the mosque. He would go with us to pray. When the time comes for Hajj, he would send up to two, three hundred people a year with his own money to the Hajj. This is a Christian. When the Ramadan comes and they are fasting, he would send food to almost all the mosques so that the Muslims can use it for iftar. This is a Christian. And I believe that example has stood us very well. But not only that, among ourselves, we have cultural exchanges. Muslims and Christians, they cohabit. Sometimes you find a house where the wife is a Christian and husband is a Muslim. I have one example. I am a Muslim. I am Muslim. When I met my wife, she was Christian. She was Catholic. When I married her, without any compulsion, without any bidding from me, she decided to convert to Islam. She said, in fact, she visited Mecca and did the Hajj two years before I did. So that's the kind of relationships we have. The president, two years, a year or so ago, his brother, younger brother got married to a Muslim. Well, that marriage was consecrated in the mosque. But the president and his brother and family went to the mosque. Consecrated. We don't have boundaries. And I believe that has helped us. So if that has helped us, I believe we can find ways of finding accommodation for ourselves so that we can carry on mankind. Because if we do not seize the conflicts in life, peace is the foundation for everything, including education. If there is no peace, the education will not take place. We have seen two instances in 1991, 2002. For those of you who have read, Sierra Leone was involved in a very serious fratricidal war called the Rebel War. For 11 years, we were fighting among ourselves. For those years, the children suffered. No school. And today, those children have lost out in education. They are going to be adults. They haven't had the opportunity to learn, but we are fighting. Now, they cannot reach their potential as they should. So the foundation there, for them to develop into useful human beings, didn't exist at the time. The living environment was taken away from them by adults who, for their own selfish ends, for their own ideology, brought the war upon the country. And very last year, it's uh, 2014, about May last year, we were visited by the plague of the Ebola virus in our country. We were for nine months. I, mean, I haven't moved out of Sierra Leone. This is the first time I traveled because we were fighting against the virus, which has also affected the school, affected the colleges. Everybody has had to stop going to school. It's only about a week or two ago that we started sending the children back to school because we want them to be safe. So when you don't have an enabling environment, education will not try. Education will not try. And today, education is the key to success. That is why I am very happy that I've been invited here to speak to faculty who know better than I do about education, but also to speak to students who I'm sure have a lot of opportunities open to them, but they must grab these opportunities with both hands. Because time, as they say in Latin, tempus fugit, time flies. If you waste time and you don't do the things you should do, when you should do them, you will only have yourself to play. I am also happy that the major factors here are uh, that of medicine. And I also know as a Minister of Information and Communication, I'm very happy there's a faculty of ICT here. Faculty of Engineering. And I understand you also have a sister university which is interested in, in, in agriculture. You also have a university that is in mining and metallurgy, mining and chemical engineering. 
That's my field. As a professional, I was a mining engineer. I studied in Nottingham, which is only 50 miles to the east of where the rector studied his, uh, his master's in Birmingham. So I can say that the rector and myself, we have something in common. While I was in Nottingham, he was in uh, Birmingham. So we do want to do a visit and cross around each other. But these are the basics of life. Chemical manufacture, medicine, agriculture, and of course, mining because of our own material. And of course, this is what is open to us in the third world. But that's why the industries of the past. Today, with the new technology, ICT is really supreme. We must pay attention to that because it has the potential to help us countries of the third world, to move from where we were, from being like two, three hundred year, year, years behind developed countries, to leapfrogging to the same level of development in terms of the technology today. Because all you need is brain power and commitment and determination. You don't need a lot of capital to get involved in ICT. I see everywhere. Nowadays, every country is investing in the information highway. They put it in the fiber cable tomorrow. But you are student. Your opportunity is to learn how you can use those uh, facilities that exist so that you can improve your life. Going to business, going to teaching, going to uh, industry. Why shouldn't you think about it? Think about it because when you look about prosperity today in the world, the richest people in the world today are people who are in ICT. Who can tell you the name of the richest man in the world? His name is Bill Gates. Microsoft. Computers. The second richest man is the Carlos in Mexico. Telephone. Telecommunication. Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook, all of us, they only use ICT. And this is within your class. You have a faculty here. They want you to start thinking that yes, us as a third world, we are being given the opportunity not to overtake but to run our best with the developed world in terms of uh, ICT education. Because if we do, there are a lot of things. A lot of things you can do that can bring development in your countries and improve your personal station in that. But above all, before that can happen, you need a peaceful atmosphere. You need a tolerant atmosphere. You need a tranquil atmosphere. That is why peace, tranquility, and tolerance of any sort, religious or social, must be our watchword in the world, because without that, we will not be able to tap all of the resources, to tap all of the potential that exists for us as human beings. So, it is important that we live. We want to be very successful human beings, happy, and also love inside people. We must remember to love our neighbors as we love. Uh, I thank you very much.